and welcome to Jerusalem Temple's virtual service. We are so glad that you have taken our time to join us today. And we are so very grateful that God has blessed us to see this very new year of 2021. As we all know, last year of 2020 was a very challenging and difficult one for us all. But because of God's grace, he has kept us and allowed us to be here today. And so therefore we ask that you would just simply help us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ by simply liking our page, sharing our videos, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by one of the ways that are displayed across the screen. You may do that now, or you can just simply wait until after you have enjoyed the service to be a blessing. However you choose, we are just thankful that you have joined us, and we pray that God continue to be a blessing upon each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your blessings. 
for your hand of deliverance. We thank you for keeping us and watching over us. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you will touch today, that you will heal the sick, that you will touch those whose spirits are so troubled that they don't know what to do. Bless in the name of Jesus. And oh God, keep us in your care. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen, amen. Well, we are glad that you are tuned in to these services on today. And we pray that God will forever bless, that he will keep you. That he will even keep you from this pandemic, this virus that has taken so many people's lives. But we thank God that we are yet here. And of course, we give God the glory and the praise. I want to go quickly to the word of the Lord. In the book of St. John, 14th chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3. And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. These are the words of Jesus speaking to his disciples. And I want to use for a subject today, the certainty of his coming. The certainty of his coming. You know, here the Lord Jesus speaks about his coming again. It is so true. It is real. It's not a fairy tale, but the Lord Jesus is certainly coming again. And when I looked at when he came the first time, he came for the humanity, for humanity, to save humanity, to save all people. And certainly here, if we take a look at by ways of comparison, if we look at the word atonement, and the word atonement, it, it simply means when the Lord Jesus came and gave his life for all of humanity, the atonement. Now, when I look at his coming, the second coming, and you look at the word atonement, it occurs many times in the New Testament, about 300 times in the New Testament, the atonement occurs only once in the New Testament. But his coming now, of course, uh, this is not to minimize the atonement, but it's to show the very importance of the second coming of the Lord Jesus. That second coming, for if you look at it, uh, if there had not been an atonement, we would not have a second coming. But Jesus came, the Son of God, to die for the sins of humanity, to give his life that men and women, girls and boys, everywhere, that they could be reconciled to God. In other words, uh, there was no other way. There was no other way. The price had to be paid, had to be paid for the sins of humanity to please the Father. And Jesus came and paid that price. And certainly, when we look at the second coming, the second coming 
It begins with the very beginning, the very beginning, the second coming began because in Genesis, the third chapter and 15th verse, the Lord God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between your seed and her seed. The Bible said, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. In other words, Satan was to inflict only temporary suffering on Jesus Christ the Messiah. And Christ shall utterly crush and eternally defeat Satan. It's gonna happen at his second coming. It's gonna take place you know, this world is said to be, uh, or, or Satan is said to be the God of this world. But he can only do whatever God allows him to do. And you can remember when he, the, the, the devil or Satan came before God with the other sons of God. And the Lord asked him, well, where are you going? Where are you? He said, I, I've been walking to and fro in the earth and seeking someone to devour. He said, have you considered my servant Job? In other words, uh, go there. You can test Job. You can tempt Job. But one thing about it, you can't take his life. So the devil can do just what God allowed him to do. He can't overstep his bounds. And in the book of Romans, Romans 16 and 20, Paul said, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The God of peace shall do it, huh? So the second coming of Jesus is prophesied throughout the scripture. His second coming is prophesied throughout the word of God. It's prophesied in the Old Testament. It's prophesied also many times, more than 300 times in the New Testament. When we look at the book of Revelation, Revelation the 19th chapter, verse 11 through 21, John said, I saw a door open in heaven. And in looking at that door, that opening, he says, and the Son of God, the Word of God, as King of King and Lords of Lord, he came with thundering sounds and echoes riding on a white horse. Praise the Lord. And then all of the saints of God, all of the heavenly army followed him upon white horses also. And there in the book of Michael, Michael the fourth chapter, verses three and two, the three and four, that is, and as I paraphrase it, it says, Michael announced that when the Lord comes the second time, wars will cease. Neither shall there be, they shall not even learn war anymore, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree and none shall make them afraid. Well, this really refers to Israel and others, but mainly Israel. Israel has had so many problems and difficulties uh, with other nations, uh, other nations uh, taking and placing them in captivity. And this is a period that Michael talks about in the millennium, the millennium period, where Israel, Israel especially, a man shall sit under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. There have been many times when Israel has been afraid because of the enemy. It seemed like all the nations around them hated them so, but they were being punished also by God for turning away from him. Time and time again, they did the same thing. They turned and they went 
a whoring after idol gods. And certainly God was not pleased. And then even in the book of Joel, Joel 16 and 17, the Lord said also, he said this, the Lord also, hallelujah, shall roar out of Zion. He shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heaven and the earth shall be shaken. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion. One day, hallelujah, even at that second coming, when he comes, praise the Lord, he's coming, praise the Lord, and, and he shall roar out of Zion out of Jerusalem and utter his voice there from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. What a terrible day. What a terrible day. But that second coming, things are going to happen. Things are going to be upset. And, and the Bible said in, even in Zacharias, he testifies. He says that the Lord my God shall come. And all of the saints with him and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives that is which is just outside of Jerusalem on the east he shall stand there and the Mount of Olives shall cleave praise the Lord cleave apart and there praise the Lord the Lord God will be there then Melchizedek he talks about the coming of the Lord. Malachi 4 and 2 says, The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And this shows that Christ really, he comes to cast his benediction, his benediction and bounty upon the earth before he smites it with a curse. He is coming. Praise the Lord. These Old Testament prophets prophesied that the Lord is coming. And there are those who doubt his coming. Hallelujah. And said that he's not coming. And said, praise the Lord. Uh, it's been a long time now. But the apostle said, God is not slack. Concerning his promises as men count slackness. But he's long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all men shall come to repentance. He's given an opportunity, given time, given a chance, praise the Lord. But not only do we have uh, uh, those old, the prophecy from the Old Testament. But we also have New Testament witnesses, and they speak in 1 Peter 5 and 4. Peter says, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. The chief shepherd, when he shall appear, is going to happen. One who is those that are ready, those that have been washed in the blood will receive a crown of glory. Then there in 1 John, the third chapter, verses 2 and 3, as I paraphrase there, it said, But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about those that have given their lives to him, have lived for him faithfully down through the years. Praise the Lord. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man, a woman, girl, or boy that has this hope, purify himself, even as he is pure. It's the only thing that will exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. And I tell you, our nation. The world, praise the Lord, is in terrible condition now. There, praise the Lord, in Acts, the first chapter, verse 11, it tells you this, as Jesus was out on the Mount of Olives and about to descend from heaven, to heaven, that is, he began to give his disciples 
uh, instructions about going back to Jerusalem and waiting for the promise, waiting for the Holy Ghost. And therefore, praise the Lord. And while he was talking then, hallelujah, the cloud caught him up. And he prayed that the disciples were, were looking up, looking and see him go. And therefore, the two men standing by them, the angels, and hallelujah, they said unto him, this same Jesus, hallelujah, which is taken from you to heaven, and so shall he come in like manner. As you've seen him go, he's coming back that same way in like manner. And so praise the Lord, we today, hallelujah, if the Lord has saved you, if you are one of his, if you are part of the body of Christ, you're expecting and you're looking for him, knowing that he is coming. Praise the Lord. And John 14 and 3 says, Jesus said, that is, I will come again. I will come again. And you find that some people don't believe in the second coming. Some don't believe there's a second coming. Some believe, but are afraid to proclaim it. They believe, but are afraid to proclaim it. And then, praise the Lord, they say that it causes fear and frustration among people. And others believe, but they say, we believe, but it's non-essential. Hallelujah. But the Bible, Bible-believing and saved Christians and individuals believe in the second coming and proclaim it. Hallelujah. You hear it being proclaimed over television, radio, in churches, and everywhere you go, that Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. And I tell you, pray, it is so true. It looks like we are so busy doing this and that. Everything but looking upward. Everything but seeking God. But I want to tell you, it's time to seek him while he may be found. It's time to call on him while he is near. It's going to happen. He's going to judge the world. And he is a just God and a righteous God. Hallelujah. A God that cannot lie. A God that will not die anymore. Hallelujah. You find Jesus the Son died once on Calvary. But he is now alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And I tell you, praise the Lord, it's time to get in a hurry and to believe what God has said in his word. It is essential. It's very essential to all Bible prophecies and New Testament voices for him to return. Hallelujah. It's essential. Jesus must return. Hallelujah. It is not only a certainty but it is also an imperative that he must return. Hallelujah. And it's time to be ready. Or so be they having what they call fun, having a good time. Hallelujah. Doing whatever they like to do and what they want to do. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you that the Lord Jesus is coming again. I said he's coming again. And it is necessary for Jesus to come to prove, praise the Lord, his truthfulness and his faithfulness. Prove what he has claimed. Hallelujah. And he claimed to be the Son of God. God, the Son, he is. And that he's the heir, the heir of the world. And he's the disposer of the destiny of men. Hallelujah. Your destiny, hallelujah, is in his hand. Can you tell the Lord, thank you? And somebody said, where shall I be when the first trumpet sound? Hallelujah, where shall I be when it sounds so loud? Hallelujah, it's going to wake up the dead, but where shall I be? Hallelujah. And if Jesus, you see, if Jesus was not what he claimed to be, he would be the most arrogant 
hallelujah, the most wicked deceiver who has sought to blind and entrap the sons of men. Hallelujah. This world most despicable imposter. If he is not who he said he is, but he is. John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the truth and I'm the light. Praise the Lord. You see, I, I'm not a way. I'm not a truth, not a life, but I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. And there is no other way. Hallelujah. I said there is no other way. You see, Jesus must be the object of our faith. Hallelujah. And he brought grace and truth. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that one can be saved. Hallelujah. If he claimed Jesus. One can be saved if he believed in the Son of God. Have faith in the Son of God. That he was crucified, died, and was buried. And rose from the dead. And we are saved by, through Jesus Christ. By the grace of God. Oh, it's by his grace. Hallelujah, his mercy. And we've got to think today that that time is running out on us. Time is running out on us. The day is at hand. Jesus is coming again. And Jesus, praise the Lord, he's all that he claimed to be and even more. Praise the Lord. And before long, he will prove it. Hallelujah. And those who believe will see him as the fulfiller of all of his promises. All of his promises are yea, yea, hallelujah. People can make up and say what you want to say, hallelujah, but what only count is what Jesus is saying, what the word of God tells us, and we've got to look at that word, hallelujah. So many things that must be gotten rid of, so many things that must be put aside and out of the way, hallelujah, your pride. Hallelujah, being so proud and lifted up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, your hatred and dislike for individuals. When Jesus said, love your enemies and do good to them that despitefully use you. Hallelujah, pray for them. Hallelujah, and he said, pray for me in everywhere. So it is necessary for Christ, hallelujah, to make good his claim as king of Israel and also of the whole world. He is our king. Hallelujah. Somebody tell him thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is the God of all creation, the God of the entire universe. Praise the Lord. And listen, praise the Lord. He's not coming the second time as a babe. I said he's not coming, praise the Lord, the second time as a babe that is to be rejected, to be despised, to be beaten and crucified. He's not coming in that matter, but he's coming as a conquering king, a conquering king, the lion of the tribe of Judah. My God will come. Can you tell him thank you? Praise the Lord. And he must come to justify. He must come to justify the long, long years of waiting. Hallelujah. The long, long years of waiting. Men have believed it, believed Jesus. Hallelujah. Men have trusted him, have waited, have watched, has hoped, and have died as they call on the name of Jesus. Many have been murdered and martyred to praise the Lord. Their lives have been taken because of their calling on the name of Jesus. He must come to justify the stake and the torture. He must come and thank God Jesus will come again. Neither men nor fallen angels nor devils nor any demons will stop him from keeping his promise to return. Oh, he's coming. But he's long-suffering to us, one. Not willing that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Oh, it's time to give up. It's time to give up the ways of the world. 
It's time to recognize that we were put here for God's good pleasure. We were put on this earth to please him, to glorify him, and to magnify him. Hallelujah. I know that man failed. Man failed, praise the Lord. The fall of man, it brought sin into the world. Hallelujah. But Jesus had a remedy for that. Hallelujah. He loved us so until he gave his son Jesus. Hallelujah. And listen, until this hour, praise the Lord, until this very hour, Human government has been huge and a costly failure. Human government has failed. Hallelujah. A costly failure. From the beginning, it has produced a series of unbroken war. Unbroken war, battles, blood, tyrannies, and oppression, and anguish, and woe. All of this. Hallelujah has been produced by mankind. And there is no hope of betterment in sight. For this world, hallelujah, the men of the world, they look at, and they have their plans and all of their strategies. And they all will fail, praise the Lord. This world is getting worse and worse. Worse and worse. People have turned their backs on God. Things that they used to believe. And now, praise the Lord, they don't believe any longer. Believe it's all right to murder babies. Believe it's all right to take their lives. Uh, yeah, believe that that's the right of a woman. No woman nowhere has no right to take any life. Hallelujah. Let no one her own baby. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, praise the Lord, there is no angel of peace in sight. There is no angel of peace on the horizon. Only we see only black, formless things of discord, confusion, hallelujah, and ever resounding conflict. Hallelujah, but the only hope for man, the only hope for this world is the return of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And listen, he's coming again. As lightning flashes from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Lord be. Hallelujah, he's coming. And men and women will see him, will see and experience seeing him coming, praise the Lord, to this earth again. No doubt the televisions, the internets, and all praise the Lord, because you see, he's coming down in Jerusalem coming down the Mount of Olives there, hallelujah, and men will see and women will see him coming, hallelujah, newscasters and what have you, no doubt, will be reporting all over the world, hallelujah, and see the Lord coming, the hope of glory, the lily of the valley, he's the bright and morning star, he's the hope of glory, He's your hope today if you have any hope. Hallelujah. It's only in Christ Jesus. It's only in Christ Jesus the prophets have foretold it in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Hallelujah. It's time to turn around. It's time to give your life to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. I thank God for you today. I thank God for your tune in to this message on today. I hope that, praise the Lord, your hearts have been pierced to recognize I need to get up. I need to get in a hurry. I need to go to the house of the Lord. And I know in this pandemic time, many of me may not be open now. Praise the Lord. But I feel that God is going to bless Praise the Lord, where houses will be open again, and there will be open. Praise the Lord. But at the same time, praise the Lord, God have made you stewards over your own body, that you take care of it. Praise the Lord, and listen to, hallelujah, listen to even the scientists. God gave them the wisdom that they have, to have and that they've learned, and all good wisdom, it comes from above, huh? 
Praise the Lord. And so let's govern ourselves accordingly because too many people, so many people have died from this virus and are sick from it. Hallelujah. But in, in, in respect to all of that, the most important thing is the return of the Savior. God bless you and the Lord keep you. We invite you to tune in next Sunday at the same time for the Jerusalem Temple Church of God in Christ. God bless you. After hearing the word of God, if you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I invite you and I encourage you to do so at this time. Just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you rose again. And Jesus, I pray that you will forgive me for my sins. And that you will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, you are now my brother or my sister in Christ. And we are so happy and excited that you made Jesus Christ your choice. Let us hear from you. If you made the awesome decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, we would love to hear from you. Use the information on your screen to contact us and we will be praying for you. If you do not have a church home, we would love to have you into our fellowship at Jerusalem Temple. Just email us your name and your number and a member of our ministerial staff will contact you with further information on how you can do so. If you would like to be a financial blessing to this ministry, keep watching for further information.